Um, Lauren, when we come back, who's, who's, who do we have? We're going to have Peter Berkowitz to talk about the uh, rising conflict in Syria and how it's affecting right now the contentious borders along Jordan and Israel. And he's, you know, an expert in Middle Eastern affairs and foreign affairs. And we just had the president just return from his trip to Israel and meeting uh, with Palestinian leaders and meeting with uh, folks in Jordan. And, and he's going and, and Bibi Netanyahu, and they did a nice little commercial. Right. And we're sort gonna, of a cartoon. That he's going to provide a little analysis and to see violence may go. Okay, so that's next. Peter Berkowitz of the Hudson Institute, John Cass, Lauren Cohn, News with Ryan Burrow. It is 930. 89. WLS. When you want Chicago's classic hits, turn to 94.7 WLS for traffic and weather info. Tune in to 890 AM WLS for traffic and weather first on the fives when you need it most. When you see news happening, call the 89 WLS News Tip Hotline. Help make 89 WLS the most plugged-in news department in Chicago. See it, say it. The WLS News Tip Hotline, 312-236-0507. John Cass, Lauren Cohn, 89 WLS. We're taking your calls, 591-8900, and we have a special guest. Peter Berkowitz from the Hoover Institution, Stanford, is with us on the line. He is an expert in foreign affairs. The issue today, the Middle East, Syria, Israel, and Turkey, and are, is the United States going to be drawn into a war? Mr. Berkowitz, are you on the phone with us? I am on the phone with you, yes. I know that uh, foreign policy discussions are layered and contextual and uh, precise. And we are on radio where we tend to distill everything down to a few sentences. And I know that's quite frustrating for a professor. But in general, how do you make uh, the discussion about chemical weapons in Syria and how it applies to the United States being drawn in or not? Well, in general, and being precise, I regard it as an extremely messy situation. Of course. Um, Syria matters to us uh, greatly for a number of reasons. First, there's the humanitarian reason. More than 70,000 people have been killed in the last two years as a result of the Syrian civil war. There's the weapons question. As you mentioned, there are the chemical weapons. The Assad regime has substantial stockpiles of chemical weapons, but they have huge amounts of chemical, of, uh, sorry, of conventional weapons, which would be very dangerous if, for example, they get uh, shipped into the hands of Hezbollah. Um, there's, the, there's the threat of destabilizing Turkey. There's the threat, if Assad is victorious, which seems very unlikely, of extending the Iranian uh, access. So what you see right now is really... Uh, you see, unfortunately, a fracturing of the opposition to Assad between a more moderate camp that we, the United States, supports, and so and it's also supported by Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Unfortunately, the Turks and the Qataris are supporting that part of the, uh, the rebel coalition that is sponsored by the Muslim Brotherhood. That would result in another, a new Muslim Brotherhood power arising in Syria, which would be counter to American interests. So if we were to see Assad go away, we don't necessarily know that that would end any type of contentions or, or conflict because of all these factions that are there. Well, that's exactly right. In other words, there's actually a very substantial fear that uh, Assad's replacement, of course, Assad enjoys the backing of Shia Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran. At this stage, he could well be replaced by Sunni Muslim Brotherhood, which is also dedicated to Islamic revolution and imposing Sharia, Islamic law, not only in, in, its, in that state, Syria, but throughout the region. This would be de destabilizing in a different way. So what would you counsel be done? <laughs> the hard question. Uh, Look, it's very hard to pick uh, winners and losers here. We know from reports yesterday in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal that um, Turkey, Qatar, and the CIA have been funneling weapons to, uh, to the rebels. It seems to me this is at least minimally necessary to prevent uh, further slaughter of civilians by Assad. Um, there's a lot of diplomacy going on behind the scenes. We know that the Obama administration has been late and has been fairly... Uh, feeble so far in trying to support the, the moderate candidates. 
Uh, that said, intervention is very complex. What I hope is going on behind the scenes is that we, the United States, are making uh, provisions with Israel to secure chemical weapons to make sure that they don't fall into the hands of uh, Hezbollah or, for that matter, Muslim Brotherhood or Al-Qaeda-backed forces. You don't, what about the Americans working with Turkey? You yes. Know, it's, uh, just from the color of your comments, I got the sense that um, you are casting Turkey as, some, as if not uh, support, if not antithetical to U.S. policy, at least uh, indifferent or uh, not constructive. Did I misinterpret your comments? Uh, you didn't exactly misinterpret my comments, but uh, unfortunately, they're still more ambiguous than that. On the one hand, Turkey is now, again, we know from the reports yesterday uh, in the Times and the Wall Street Journal that uh, our CIA is, is collaborating with Turkey and Qatar to funnel weapons to the rebels. In that sense, supporting the rebels against Assad, we're on the same side. However, the Turks seem to be supporting that part of the coalition that is dominated by Muslim Brotherhood and al-Qaeda. We're supporting the uh, the more moderate version. We meaning the we United mean, States? We meaning the United States, Okay, yes. I just wanted to make that clear that you were speaking for the United yes, States. Yes, absolutely. Um, we, the United States, are supporting the more, uh, the more moderate segment of the opposition. So, uh, uh, in one respect, our interests coincide with the Turks. Mm -hmm. We oppose Assad. In another respect, our uh, interests diverge from the Turks because we support the moderate uh moderate side. Two things came out today. One is that the uh, Syrian opposition leaders have been asking Secretary of State Kerry, who we know made the trip to uh, the Middle East um, unannounced to Afghanistan, but went there for Patriot missiles to protect the rebels. Meantime, the Secretary of State was confronting Iraq. He met with Prime Minister Nouri al-Malikai about the Iranian um, support of Assad and ferrying weapons. Yes, it's a very serious problem. The uh, Iran, Iraq, sorry, has been opening up its airspace to uh, flights from Iran to to bring tons upon tons of weapons to support the Assad regime. The Bashar al-Assad regime is extremely important to the Iranians. It allows the Iranians to cr create a kind of Shiite axis that stretches from Iran through Iraq, which is not Malaki is a Shia through Syria, Assad being friendly to uh, Iran. Syria, of course, has ports on the Mediterranean, and Syria looms over uh, Lebanon. The collapse of, uh, of, uh, of Bashar al-Assad's Syria would be a serious blow to the Iranians. So we, the United States, are seeking, uh, our ostensible, seeking support from our ostensible allies, the Iraqis, to prevent uh, these overflights. Who protects the Christians, then? Who protects when, uh, if you get rid of Assad, as you wish, who protects the Christians who will be slaughtered well, there? Well, you know, it's an excellent question. Uh, the, um, I, if, uh, if the moderates that the United States is supporting uh, prevail, it is reasonable to assume that the Christians will be protected. If the Muslim Brotherhood prevails, then, as in Egypt, as with regard to the cops, it's reasonable to, uh, to have the most serious worries that uh, that the Christians in Syria will be in harm's way. On that note, we'll have to break, but uh, we're told that you're in Chicago visiting uh, family. That's correct, yes. So for Passover, so hello to everybody in your family. Welcome back to Chicago. Happy Pesach. And we'll see you uh, hopefully another time. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank so you, much, Professor Berkowitz. Uh, John Cass, Lauren Cohn, back after this. When you want Chicago's classic hits, turn to 94.7 WLS for traffic and weather info. Tune into 890 AM WLS for traffic and weather first on the fives when you need it most. Chicago's Talk Later, 89 WLS on the air and on iHeartRadio. Well, Lauren, going on any vacations lately? Yeah, you know, I think it's about five years, honestly, since I've been able to take a vacation. Times are tough. Why, good for all those people out there who can, you know, afford it, though. It's what you aspire you. to. I, I haven't had a real vacation in about five years. Uh, I mean, I, I don't count leave, taking a day off to drive to Virginia to watch soccer. But uh, You're talking about a week vacation where you actually buy tickets or you go somewhere. and You go somewhere and you get, you know, everything out of your mind. You clear your mind. Right. right? What's that like? 
I don't know what that's like. <laughs> I don't either. You know, to have that sort of just the feel, the fishing line on your finger, and that's the the entire universe. Yeah. Is, you know, goes down to that one tension on the fishing line. You know who really knows how that feels like, and more than just you know once or twice a year. Ooh. The first family. They go on some great vacations. It looks like they go on a vacation a month now. It sounds like it. Isn't that... But you know what? Okay. You know, we have to close the White House for the tours because we can't afford that. Mm -mm. We have to, you know, I don't know what, debate whether or not we should be studying the baboon, red behinds of baboons in National Geographic. Squirrels on squirrels, yeah. Squirrels on squirrels and so, so forth and the little bushy tail of the squirrel robots. But... Isn't it good that at least somebody can show us how to really live? Yeah, I while mean, we're eating, while we're eating rice and and endives <laughs> to survive <laughs> in this world, at least the president and his first family can go on three vacations in three months. Send right. the ki- send the girls to the Bahamas. And yeah, they're the Atlantis Resort with a lot of Secret Service on taxpayer money. But isn't that a isn't that something that they show us? This you you can build that. Like they looked at their vacation and said, "You built that." Right. Remember, he said, "You didn't build that, mm-hmm. but we built this one. Right. We built that vacation for him. We did." And isn't that nice? Isn't that our responsibility as people to send our president and the and the daughters and everything? It's important cool that vacation? they're well rested. Right, because they have so much. There's a lot uh, going on, and you know, right. you need to relax by the pool or play some golf. Chill out, Obama and, family. And, uh, and all those kids who, you know, saved all their money and their pennies and had bake sale so they could go to Washington to tour the White House are now uh, over at the Science Museum instead. John Cass, Lauren Cohn, we're back after this. I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. When you encounter travel tie-ups, tell the 89 WLS traffic tip line. Just call 312-984-CARS. 312-984-5277. Lauren Cohn, John Cass, 89 WLS. Lauren, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, let's say. Mm-hmm. And you really, you really got to have some... Jalapeno dip or something. You're hungry, huh? What, what what goes on here? Isn't it fun that you know we take top honors in being like unemployed and being broke? Killer, wait, murders, right? Corruption, being broke, unemployment. But hey, we're number one in something else, folks. That's good. That's actually good. But we're going to try and figure out why. So we're going to be taking your calls through on two five nine one eighty nine hundred coming up. And what are we number one in, Lauren? That late night delivery snacking, John. The question is why? Five nine one eighty nine hundred. John Cass, Lauren Cohn, News with Ryan Burrow. It is ten o'clock. One station making history every day. Eighty nine W.